dear brothers, dear friends, dear devotees, bows, matajis, and male devotees, sannyasis, acharyas, brahmacharis, preachers, and supporters of the preachers in diverse ways. It is our great joy to speak a few words. It is our pleasure to speak a few words to welcome you to the second meeting of the World Vaishnava Association chapter, Poland. I was also very happy because this year I first time visited Poland and started some little preaching center very humbly in Wrocław and also has been my great joy that this year my god brother and first Polish devotee to take the renounced order of life to heart after having prepared for it in his Grihasta life since he is one of the rare souls that initiated by Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And now he's going to serve wherever the Lord allows him, but especially in Poland, so that the great friends and great devotees of this beautiful country can embrace each other more intensively and more uh, appreciatively than before. You see, our Vaishnava community is a community where we are definitely all brothers and sisters. And those brothers and sisters chanting Hare Krishna in whatever way they do that, whatever minor differences they may have in their way of worshipping and chanting, they are all so dear to Krishna. This is very important. Sometimes in the mood of competition and uh, maybe some misunderstandings, we come to the conclusion that maybe somebody else is not that good as my people. But as far as the world is concerned, we are all one messengers of those messages to chant the holy name of Krishna, to redeem themselves, to understand that we are all belonging to one family. I mean, isn't that the message of Krishna consciousness, that we all belong to one family? That's that why we all should chant Hare Krishna. So then you get people, they already chant Hare Krishna, but you say, no, they're not part of the family. So that is a very strange uh, attitude, because actually, very, very interestingly, I once heard in, in, a, in a religious meeting uh, that they say, religious people, they spend 90% of their time speaking about what others other people do who actually believe the same thing they do, but just they practice it a little bit different, and that gets them so going that they just keep dwelling upon it and thought, talking and thinking, oh, why they're doing it different? It must not be perfect. There must be something bad about it. So and they, they go all off on it, and they forget that we are not only brothers in spirit, but we are also brothers in action. We chant the same songs, we worship the same Guru Parampara or similar Guru Paramparas, we, uh, we eat the same food, uh, we, we, we love the same Vrindavan Dham, Mayapur Dham, Jagannapuri Dham, we all worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagannath Swami Subhadra Balarama, or at least we believe in the four Sampradaya founders like Srila Madhvacharya, Srila Ramanuja Acharya, Nimbarka Acharya or Vishnu Swami. All of them worship Vishnu Tattva expansions or the original Lord, the Swayam Rupa Bhagavan, but they are all worshipping the Lord since thousands of years like in Tirupati. They are all worship, we all worship and follow the Vedic scriptures which are giving us <clears throat> the guidance towards the spirituality. So it looks rather necessary and needy that those people who follow these beautiful traditions have a very good relationship with each other and they try their very best to work 
on some issues, especially those issues of their common concern, very closely shoulder to shoulder, because that makes a good impression and also has a bigger impact. Then we may go home and have our personal private way of worship and our dear, uh, dearest of the dearest in our each respective mission. But that's a secondary thing. You know, now when you go to Mayapur, there's 50 temples, right? One right next to the other of different missions. And when there's a festival in Mayapur, especially in Agodiaman, everybody's invited and they all send at least one or two or three representatives to join the Mahotsav of the appearance of the spiritual master of the other mission or the disappearance. And this way there is always a common, uh, a common platform and everybody knows that we have a lot of things to do which we can only do all together. So therefore it's actually the WBA the Vishwa Vaishnav Raj Shabha is an answer which was called for by Srila Jiva Goswami himself. Srila Jiva Goswami invoked uh, the Vishwa Vaishnav Raj Shabha at the end of each one of his Sandarvas. Of course he was a great visionary so he could also understand that there will be many, many Vaishnavas in the future. I mean, there were already many Vaishnavas groups at his time. I mean, look in Vendavan, there were many pure devotees and they started different temples. Even majestic monuments they constructed while it was almost impossible to do such a thing. I mean, you cannot imagine how difficult it is to bring a rock from Rajasthan to Vendavan to make a temple. What to speak of bringing a few hundred thousand of rocks, you know? But they did that. And why they did that? Because they wanted to give a testimony of the greatest of the teachings, unity and diversity. Because why Why Srila Sanatana Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami, and Srila Jiva Goswami, and Srila Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, or uh, Mad Madhupandit uh, Goswami, why did they make different temples right at the same time in a small village? I mean, they could have easily joined all together for the puja. Why did they have to make many? And they weren't fighting with, with each other. There was no mentioning in the scriptures that they didn't get along with each other. So why? Because they wanted to show that the unity and diversity principle is a divine principle where there's multi... Uh, plurality in acharyas going out and spreading Krishna consciousness and really establishing a temple in the heart of every new disciple what to speak in every city you start preaching and there are such urgent issues to be addressed which not one single guru and his disciples can tackle the situation of our Yamuna river right now the fact that many of the big temples nowadays their dirty waters go into the Yamuna this is an unacceptable situation. We have to all work together. We have to do anything. We should not leave one leaf unturned to correct the situation and to clean our Vrindavan as it is supposed to be. It is supposed to be a sparkling, beautiful place. And if even all our brahmacharis and sannyasis go out there with their own hands to clean, well, it would be okay, we could do it. That's what the six Goswamis did in Seva Kunja. They cleansed the Seva Kunja with their own hands. It has been a, a practice of for Vaishnavas until today to go into the holy Kunjas and cleanse there. And then you go a few meters further there and all the plastic and all the filth is dumped into the holy river where Krishna killed or defeated the Kaliya and uh, and killed the Keshi demon and played with his coward boys all the time. So it's unacceptable and we have to do something about it <coughs> right now. Now since this is a mega project which needs the government to be involved, it's not a private party, not even all the Vaishnavas together who simply can say we make a new engineering project because they have a government there. So then we have to use all our lobbying and all our power and our political friends and business friends in the community and push the government, fix up Vrindavan. We want Vrindavan to be clean and sparkling all the way, Radha Kunda, Shama Kunda and Govardhan. And what to speak around Govardhan, you see so much plastic dumping is going on. Why? 
We have to stop that. We have to work together. That's our duties if we care for Vrindavan. And then there's Nandagram, Varshana, there is uh, Raval, there is, there is of course, uh, uh, Jamat. Uh, there's plenty of places all over Braj. <coughs> basically, the bridge buses, the country people, they're very clean people. It's basically this tourism industry or these people coming from everywhere, which dumping or and the modern agriculture as well. All this has created havoc to the dam. And we are supposed to fix it. We are supposed to do something about it. There's no excuse. There's no question. It's out of a question to say, oh, I'm so busy with my bhajan. <coughs> I cannot look for that Vrindavan should be a clean place. <coughs> People from all over the world are coming there after reading the books of the great Acharyas. They're coming with the expectation of meeting the great sadhus and having this saintly environment, which of course they do have in Daphne's transcendental place, but it is not acceptable that it in any way should be neglected or be in a, a negative position. So this is what WEA has to do. That's why we have a Vindavan Dam Preservation Committee. That's why we have a Mayapur Dam Preservation Committee, a Jagannath Puri Dam Preservation Committee. And we have so many other committees. There's an educational committee. We have to share our achievements in book publishing or in, in really teaching Vaishnava uh, um, treasures to ourselves, to our own members, and to the world. In education, it looks very silly when the people are sectarian. It doesn't fit together with higher education. Even the communists and the capitalists and the whoeverists, they all share university knowledge. What's being discovered in in Frankfurt, that's been taught in Peking. And whoever gets a Nobel Prize, it's a recognition of international importance. And everybody has to say, well, if that's so, then we have to also take it into consideration. So how the highest truths of the Supreme Bhagavan can be partial to one, impartial to another, imparted only to some, and being uh, withdrawn from others is not doesn't make sense. Looks like some material concepts have have some or other uh, uh, managed to penetrate into the sacred teachings here and there and somewhere. So we have to work on that. We have to clean up our show, like they may say, because it's such an essential, important thing that we are all together when it comes to our sacred Sampradaya's teaching. You know, the Bhagavatam says the devotee is supposed to be sad if he sees other people sad and becomes happy when he sees other people becoming happy. So that also counts for the members of other missions. If what I say and I do make the members of other missions sad, that's not a good policy. It's not very helpful for anybody's spiritual development. But you see, there are so many issues. The Vishwa Vaishnavaraj Shabha has been founded by Srila Bhakti. We note Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj in its latest appearance, but it's the mission of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada who personally signed as a Patra Raj of the Vishwa Vaishnavaraj Shabha. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he invoked the presence and Vishwana Chakravati Thakur also did, and even after when Srinivas Acharya and Himalata Thakurani were in charge of the Sampradaya partially, they did have meetings of the Vishwa Vaishnava Shabha. There are several accounts of this in the sacred scriptures. So today we are very happy that you are interested to keep the spirit up, keep it up in Poland, keep it up in Hungary, keep it up anywhere in the world if you care for the greatest glory and image of our Guru Parampara. That is my most humble request. There's un unlimitedly more issues to be touched and to be spoken about, but this is the essence. All of us are together to stand up around the world and to declare boldly, Lord Krishna's teachings can save the world from illusion. And that's why we want the whole world to appreciate those sacred teachings. 
because that will be the greatest boon for everyone in this planet. And when the people in this planet will become more happy, then the Vaishnavas' hearts also become more happy. Jila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Taku Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Haribol. Haribol.